because uh, <laughs> I don't have time to do that. Uh, so uh, Go has a great API. We've seen the Go docs, uh, really well documented. And um, even if you like, weren't, didn't want to use the language, studying the, the documents will teach you a lot. Like, if you're going to go to some other programming language, you may take the things you learned from Go with you, right? Of, oh, here's how I want to make a networks application in some other language. I want to copy their API or something. So that's uh, really great stuff in there. Uh, the tools are great, so the compiler is extremely fast. Uh, that's no small deal because in C++ it's not fast. So builds on large, complex applications in a company like Google, it'll take like 20 minutes, okay? You've probably seen that XKCD comment with the guys uh, fighting with swords on top of their chairs and the boss walks by and he's like, what are you guys doing? And they're like, compiling, right? Because while it's compiling, you have nothing to do. And, and that is a huge problem with large applications. Go, go compilation speeds are fast, okay? And they're getting faster. Uh, but so, so it has good tools. This is another thing that static typing gives you that's very hard to do with dynamic typing. Okay, so in a dynamically typed language, you're so flexible with what you can do. It's very hard to build a tool that can like analyze your source code and discover things about it, okay? Um, for example, there are tools for Go that can tell me everything in the standard library that implements a particular interface. Doing that in Python or in Ruby is really hard, okay? And so, because it's easy to do, people have made those tools. Um, so that's uh, another thing. And then this is a big deal, okay? When he was talking about the fact that languages like Java and C++, uh, they are not designed for modern hardware or modern networked applications. What he means is that creating threads, managing threads, managing the, the communication between those threads is a really, like, you're super low level. It's a manual process and requires, I mean, you have to be an expert to be able to make those applications well. Um, and the truth is, what we're doing today as far as software, the kinds of applications we build today, that's like all they do. So that means that you get nothing to help you in those languages, okay? Now, there are libraries that people have created to make it a little easier. But the point is, in Go, we saw that Friday. It's really easy to start up new threads and communicate between them, use Go routines and channels. And so the language is already sort of geared towards making those applications. It makes it a lot easier. And then finally, you get object-oriented code without the hierarchy. Um, and, you know, people joke about the, the hierarchy in languages like Java, but it becomes kind of ridiculous, right? It's like the Hello World Enterprise Edition that has 13 layers of abstraction and it's a joke, but then when you look at real enterprise code, it's actually not far from the truth. Uh, that it becomes very hard to reason about those programs because there's so much abstraction. Um, so, code doesn't have the hierarchy. You get like the one level of abstraction, and that's it. So, okay. Any more questions about Go and why you might want to use it? Um, yeah. This is sort of a. Uh, it's, it's actually you mentioned PHP um, being more of a web language. Not really related to Go, but why is PHP um, more of a back, a server language, and JavaScript more of a front end? If they're both web languages, does one do like more of this, uh, these kind of tools that Go offers that make it good for servers, uh, you know, like concurrency? And so the reason for PHP's success is that it was installed everywhere. So if you have, you wanted to make a web page, and you need somewhere to host that web page, and so you find a provider online. And that online, like you go to some, you sign up for some service or something, pay some monthly fee to get it. That server they gave you would have PHP installed on it. That's why people use PHP, because it was there, okay? Uh, That's true. I mean, in general, and if it weren't for Facebook, PHP uh, would probably be dead. But Facebook uses PHP for everything. And since they went that route, what they did is they recreated the PHP uh, interpreter and made it compile into C++ code and then used the C++, I mean, it's ridiculous what they did. Right. But, uh, yeah, and that tells you the pain of PHP, right, is that they had to go through that process in order to make something that remotely worked. Um, so I don't think PHP for a new company is a good idea. Um, it's not gonna, and it's not that great of a language. It has lots of issues. So but, that's what makes Python very, uh, or PHP, very popular. Just, yeah, I mean, what's it's like, it's available, in yeah, so things have, have sort of changed since then, uh, and, and we're going to be creating applications as applications, not as, so in the PHP model, you run Apache, 
and then it has this little plug-in, which goes to PHP, and then goes back to Apache. And that was the model people used to make web apps. And increasingly, we're just giving up on that model. And we're moving towards, I just make an application that is an HTTP server. I don't have Apache, it just handles everything directly, okay? And in that model, PHP is like useless. You don't need it, right? Now in that model, you can create those servers in Python, you can create them in Ruby, you could create them in PHP. What about Java, and then also what about JavaScript as the server side? Is that, uh, does it also have long, you know, pretty big flaws, or? Uh, you, you mean Node.js. Node.js, yeah. Yeah, and the reason I say that is because JavaScript as a language comes with basically nothing, right? It's just the language. And in order to make a web server, you need libraries. You need a whole thing around you, right? The language is not sufficient. So Node.js provides all the other things needed to make a web server. Um, Node.js is great. And one of the things that is superior to like PHP uh, or even Ruby is its performance. It's far better. Um, and the, the downside of, of Node.js is that it's a single-threaded application. Doesn't do. It's impossible in JavaScript to have a multi-threaded program because the JavaScript language definition states that it can't be. So the way it achieves concurrency is by using events. Okay. So in JavaScript, you pass functions around, and all those functions get interleaved into one. Like, uh, if you want to do two things at the same time, what it's actually going to do is interleave them. Okay. So it's going to do the first one, then the second one, then the third one with callbacks. Uh, so if you use Node.js, you see a lot of callbacks. In Go, you don't have to do that. You can just write regular code, and it does it for you behind the scenes. So the code is going to be a real mess in JavaScript. And people call it callback hell. Okay? That's what they call that. Or spaghetti. It looks like spaghetti code. Uh, but it works. I mean, you can do a very effective server that way. The other part of Node.js is that it's not, JavaScript is not a language suitable for everything. And so a lot of Node.js code just involves writing a C++ bit of the code and then calling it from JavaScript. So you end up having to write C++. Okay. In Go, you can just write Go. You never have to go to that. Oh. Follow? Yeah. But anyway, these are like super, you have to know all these other things to know the, the the arguments. It's very hard from the outside to make those kinds of calls. Yeah? Well, um, this is more of a personal question about Go. Um, so, is there anything that you find annoying or convenient um, in Go? Yeah, so the lack of, uh, Go doesn't have generics, and the lack of generics makes some kinds of problems harder to do. Uh, so, can you explain what you mean by generics? I could try. <laughs> they call it tight polymorphism. Uh, so suppose I have a, a, a type, and I want to create a container, um, like a linked list. You guys know what a linked list is? A linked list is, is things that are connected by pointers, okay? And so each one has data, like this might be A and this might be B. You can see it has the data and a pointer to the next thing, right? So that would be B and a pointer to the next thing, C. And you get all the pointers to get to the other list. So suppose we wanted to make our own linked list um, type. In Go, what does this contain? It has to contain something. Uh, and so, does anybody know what the type of the thing would be? Like in this case, it might be a letter. So it might be a string. Uh, so I might have, you know, value uh, string. But really, the linked list the type doesn't, it could be anything. These could be numbers, they could be. Yeah. And so what I really like is the ability to tell the compiler, hey, uh, I can use this with any type. And the way we normally do that in Go, does anybody remember? Make it we use an empty interface. Okay? And this means any type. I can put anything in there. I can put ints or, or strings or, or anything. And the issue is with this code, I've now made this dynamic type. Because now it's just like Python or Ruby. I don't, got, I don't have a strong type anymore. This could be anything. And some languages support the ability to pass in a type, like this. And then this becomes T. Okay. 
and that's called a generic. Uh, but I, I don't want to get into this because one of the downsides of generics is it's hard to understand. Uh, so I don't really want to explain generics. Because go doesn't have them, so you guys can't even use them if you want them. Uh, but it might it would make these kinds of problems easier if we had generics. Uh, but we don't, so. I kind of interesting that the, the same thing that, that is regarded as a negative in other languages is suddenly in this kind of instance it became that. Yeah, so why didn't they add generics to go? And they're still kind of open to it if somebody can figure out a way to make it without causing the language to become nuts. And that's why. It's because it causes the language to become really complex. And this is their primary goal. And so they don't want to add features to the language, which causes it not to be simple anymore. Like he was saying, they don't want they don't want to be have, make a language that's only for experts. They want to make a language that's useful for, for people who are newer or it's easier to understand. So anyway, there are other things that are, but, but that's a, a big one, is the lack of generics. Um, any other questions about Go? One, one other question. So when you put in your Go app an HTTP server and you're dealing with files, I suspect HTTP files that we're going to talk about this week. So that's one compiled object that's called from the server? Uh, in, in Go, the, it is the server. It is the server. So what gets called, how does it get called then? Uh, so we'll, we'll see that. Um, actually, we'll see it from the bottom up. And so uh, we'll create a TCP server, and we'll see how that works, and then we'll create an HTTP server uh, built on top of that. Um, but the basic idea is I create a program that listens on a port, receives traffic over that port, does stuff, and then sends data back over. Yeah, so, so listens to the port, reacts to the incoming requests coming back yep. and forth. But all contained within that program versus live PHP that has layers That's right. on it that has to do that. That's right. We've taken over the full responsibility of being a web server. Um, and that's more, most modern approaches to web development do that now. Node.js does that, okay. Node.js, you handed a port, it listens on that port. It's doing all of the handling of it. So you can just run it from your terminal and you're running a server. You don't have to install Apache or uh, IIS in Windows. And it was hard for me to wrap my head around when I first heard it. I was like, what? No? Yeah, it's a radical departure from the, but it's actually simple, right? Because the earlier model involved at least two separate systems. Now this one's only one system. No, no, thanks, Terry. Um, Node.js, okay, I was talking about a lot. I'm not into JavaScript anyway. Is it a language or is it a compilation? Is it a concept? Yeah, so it's a, it's a language, the language JavaScript. And then it's um, a set of libraries that make it possible to run applications using JavaScript. Because like I said, JavaScript's just a language. It doesn't, have, it doesn't even have the idea of the main function. It has nothing like that. So JavaScript's always embedded in something else, normally your browser. So Node.js provides you the thing to embed it into to make regular <coughs> programs out of it. Uh, so you can create a, a command line application or whatever. So the name is JavaScript. Huh? Well, maybe it is JavaScript, but make it embedded it. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's the thing that makes it possible to make JavaScript programs for general purpose protocol. Does that make sense? Yes. yes yeah. OK. Any other questions? <laughs> this is good this stuff. Is okay. And I, I'll, I just want to mention one article which I read on Medium called Farewell Node.js. And it's written by TJ Hollywoodcock or something like that, who is one of the primary contributors to Node.js. And uh, he left Node.js for Go. So just on the Pentecostal proselytizing Go programming language. <laughs> Uh, you should check that out. If you're, if you're like Node versus Go, read Medium Farewell Node.js. Okay. <laughs>